Hi everyone, welcome back to my line following robot making series. In the previous part, I showed how to write the code for calibrating and controlling motors for a line follower. Today we're moving forward to an exciting step. I'll be showing you through the complete coding process for the PID controller algorithm step by step. So please watch the video till the end. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. For this series, I'm using my custom-designed PCB carrier board made specifically for line-following robot. I have designed the board using EasyEDA software and printed it from JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. To place my order, I simply uploaded the Gerber file to their website, selected the quantity and color options, and finalized the order. You can get 5 high-quality PCBs for just $2. What's more impressive is that JLCPCB provides real-time tracking of the entire production process, so you know exactly what stage your order is in. After a few days, PCBs arrived at my doorstep. The quality of the PCB was top-notch. Then I assembled the board with the required component. Then I tested the PCB and everything worked perfectly. If you're looking for a smooth, affordable, and professional PCB manufacturing experience, JLCPCB is the way to go. You can order this board directly from us, and when you purchase it, you'll receive a fully functional operating system with an OLED display, which is completely free with the carrier board. To place an order, simply visit our Instagram, WhatsApp, or Facebook page. Let's understand how the PID controller algorithm works. A PID controller is a type of control system widely used in engineering to automatically adjust a process and maintain it at a desired value, known as the setpoint. It continuously calculates the difference between the setpoint and the actual measured value, which is called the error. In the case of a line follower robot, this error represents how far the robot has deviated from the center of the line. When the robot shifts to the right, the error becomes positive, and when it shifts to the left, the error becomes negative. The PID equation generates a correction value using proportional, integral, and derivative terms, depending on how much the robot deviates from the setpoint. This correction is then applied to the motor speeds, ensuring the robot remains aligned with the line. However, in this project, I am not using the integral part, only the proportional and derivative terms. The reason is that the integral term is more useful in systems with a steady-state error, such as temperature control or motor speed regulation. A line follower robot, on the other hand, is constantly adjusting left and right, so the error is never steady. If the integral term were applied here, it would only accumulate unnecessary corrections and make the system unstable. Instead, the proportional term responds directly to how far the robot is off-center, while the derivative term smooths out the movement by predicting changes and reducing oscillation. For example, when the robot drifts to the left, the controller makes the left motor run slightly faster and the right motor slightly slower, bringing the robot back to the center. Similarly, if the robot drifts to the right, the right motor goes faster while the left motor slows down, again guiding the robot toward the center line. This continuous adjustment is how the PID controller keeps the robot balanced and accurately following the track. Before moving into the coding part, it is important to understand the concept of the while loop in the Arduino IDE. A while loop is used to repeatedly execute a set of instructions as long as a specified condition remains true. For example, if we write while 1 or while true, the loop will run indefinitely because the condition is always true. On the other hand, if we write a condition inside the parentheses, the loop will continue executing the task repeatedly until that condition becomes false. Once the condition is no longer satisfied, the loop immediately stops running, and the program continues with the next instructions. Now let's move on to the coding part. I'm starting from where we left off earlier and opening a new tab dedicated to the PID controller section of the code. The first task here is to calibrate the sides of the robot using the bit sensor pattern so we can determine which side is the left and which side is the right. For this, I've created a function called side calibration. Inside this function, I begin by reading the sensor values, then I write code to display the bit sensor pattern in the serial monitor. After that, I add logic to detect the sides. When the leftmost sensor detects the line, the serial monitor should display left.
and when the rightmost sensor detects the line, it should display right. If neither condition is met, it simply prints null. For now, I'm calling this function whenever button 2 is pressed. Once the code is uploaded to the Arduino, I press button 2 to start the program. As I move the robot left and right, I notice something unusual. When the leftmost sensor detects the line, it actually prints right, and when the rightmost sensor detects it, it prints left. Clearly, this is incorrect, so we need to fix it. The issue comes from the bit weight values. To solve it, we need to reverse the bit weight array, which means multiplying the last value of the array by sensor 0, essentially flipping the index order during the calculation. Let's see what I have actually done here. After making this change and uploading the code again, the problem is resolved. Now the robot correctly identifies its left and right sides based on the bit sensor pattern. I wanted to show this process because it's a common issue you might face, and this is the simple way to fix it. Now let's move on to the main part, the PID controller. First, I'm creating a function named PID controller, where the sensor readings are taken and the PID value is calculated to correct the motor speed. The process begins by reading the sensor values and checking whether the line is detected. Once the line is detected, the line position is calculated using the active weighted sensor values along with the summation of the active sensors that are currently detecting the line. Next, the error is determined by comparing the center position, which is predefined as the set point for the middle of the line, with the measured line position, representing the robot's current location on the track. Here, I've defined the key variables. Line position, error, and center position at the beginning. The center position is predefined as the average of the two central weight values, which I already explained earlier in this video. After that, I've added code to display the bit sensor pattern, as well as the weight and error values in the serial monitor. This allows us to get a real-time update of the error based on the sensor readings. Once this setup is complete, the PID controller function is called whenever button 2 is pressed. Now, let's observe the changes in the error values as the robot detects the line. When the robot drifts to the left, the error becomes negative, and when it drifts to the right, the error becomes positive. Now let's move on to the PID equation, which is used to calculate the correction value for balancing the robot. The first step is to calculate the derivative term by comparing the current error with the previous error. For this, I define a variable called derivative. Once that is done, I use the PID equation to calculate the correction value, which will then be applied to the motor speed. For the right motor, the correction value is added to the base speed. While for the left motor, the correction value is subtracted from the base speed. After that, I assign the current error to the variable previous error so that in the next cycle, the change in error can be calculated, which is essentially the derivative term. In this function, there are three important variables that need to be provided by the user. The base speed, kp, and kd. Here, inside this function, kp and kd are represented by proportional gain p and the derivative gains d, respectively. So, I define these variables base speed, kp, and kd at the beginning of the code. The base speed represents the robot's main speed.
Here I have to call the PID controller function with these three variables, base speed, KP, and KD. Since the motor pin variables got duplicated with the PID speed correction variable, so I need to modify the variable name in the code. I also include code to display the corrected motor speeds for both the left and right motors, making it easier to observe how the controller is working. When we run the code, we can see the sensor pattern, weight, error, and PID correction values in action. For example, when the robot drifts to the left, the left motor speed goes slightly higher while the right motor slows down, bringing the robot back to the center. Similarly, when the robot drifts to the right, the right motor speed goes slightly higher while the left motor slows down, again steering the robot toward the center line. When the robot is perfectly on the line, the error becomes zero, and both motors run at the same speed, which results in straight movement. Finally, let's observe the effect of changing the KP value. When KP is reduced, the correction becomes slower compared to before. On the other hand, increasing the KP value makes the robot respond more quickly whenever it deviates from the center. I'm now commenting out the debugging parts of the code. Then, assigning the corrected values to the motor function so that the motors are driven according to the PID output. After that, I called the PID function with the base speed, KP, and KD values when button 2 is pressed. Once the code was uploaded, I began testing the robot on a straight line only. First, I tried a KP value of 8, and the robot followed the line smoothly, sticking perfectly to the path. Then, I reduced the KP value to 5, and I noticed that the robot started drifting away from the line during operation. This happened because the response was slower due to the lower KP value. Next, I tested an extremely high KP value of 40. In this case, the robot began to oscillate because the response to line correction was too aggressive. When reviewing the runs in slow motion, the differences between the three KP values were very clear. From this experiment, I hope you now understand the role of the KP value in line following. You'll need to fine-tune and adjust it to find the most suitable setting for your own robot. Keep in mind, this test was only for straight line following. In upcoming parts, we'll move on to handling turns and executing them properly. So, make sure to subscribe and stay updated for the next episode in this series.